Welcome to Marta the Minimalist, a podcast for entrepreneurs like you, looking to minimalize your life, business, and mindset with your host, CEO, speaker, and best-selling author, Marta Saray Greca. We are live on Facebook with the amazing minimalist, uh, uh, the minimalist group, trying to get prosperous with my minimalist method. Uh, we're live recording my newest episode of Marta the Minimalist podcast with Alicia here, who is someone who was in her own industry, zone of genius for 30 years before she decided that, actually she didn't decide. It seems like the calling came to her that she absolutely had to follow her passion on how she could further help families and the uh, the industry that she was in further. And she's going to, I'm going to let her tell you a little bit more about that, but she's going to tell you how she was able to face her own. I'm sure that there was a little bit of fear, right? Her has hesitations and maybe any blocks standing in the way that allowed her to go for it. So she could be of service to more people. And on top of that, we're going to cover a couple of the things that you as business owners need to address and start to think about if you haven't already, when it comes to being proactive of protecting your business and not reactive. Without further ado, Alicia, who are you? What's your story? Why should they listen to you? Well, hi, hi. Thank you so much, uh, Marta. I'm so appreciative of this opportunity to share um, this afternoon. Uh, who am I? Wow, that's a loaded question, right? Um, uh, I am, let's see, a mother to five. Uh, I'm an army wife. I uh, have a background in dentistry, 30 years to be exact. I'm still actually in the trenches. Um, Let's see, I officiated women's college basketball at the division one level. I'm a former hooper turned, you know, uh, you know, referee. Uh, how odd is that, right? Um, but I did that for 22 years and I just I actually stepped away from that um, right before COVID um, hit. So maybe a mixed blessing there. And I'm like many of you, a business owner, right? Um, I made the decision based upon some personal adversity um, about three years ago involving my oldest son, um, he attempted suicide. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't share that to be a Debbie Downer by any means, right? Every day is challenging, right? Um, but grateful that he is, you know, still with us um, today. But it taught me several things. Um, and it was very humbling experience. Um, and, uh, you know, it was uh, definitely a turning point for me because, it, you know, it taught me that we're, we're all taking on too much right? We're trying to solve our own problems. Um, you know, we're afraid to ask for help. Um, and I'm not the only family that's operating in this space. And, and so it was, you know, became very obvious to me that, that although I'm not responsible, right, for his actions, I should be held accountable. And a lot of that stemmed from maybe my own personal, right, coping mechanisms, because I was a single mom for 16 years before I remarried five years ago. And so, you know, some of the ways that I may have handled life, right, as it was thrown at us, um, maybe wasn't up to par. And so he, you know, indirectly picked up some of those behaviors and, you know, um, and patterns. And, and so it was like, okay, aha moment. I absolutely don't want, because of course that's the extreme, but I don't want any other household to experience that, right, first and foremost. But um, I just wanted to make sure that I was filling a void um, for families so that, those that are, um, you know, met with maybe some stress and anxiety based upon some of the decisions that we have to make on a day-to-day -day basis, both good and bad, right? Um, we just need to be able to have resources to help us navigate through that. Um, and like many of you all, you know, we all wear multiple hats, <laughs> right? Um, like I just described. And so, um, you know, I quickly learned that it's okay uh, to ask for help, uh, it, uh, it's, it's okay to outsource um, and, uh, and to seek experts advice. And so um, that's where I am. That's what triggered, um, uh, you know, me starting my own business and trying to, you know, fulfill those resources for other households. Sure. And I'm sure that it, it, it sometimes things that when they're meant to be, can be easy, but often the road to jumping from full-time to entrepreneurship, um, you face some stuff, right? So what kind of stuff did you face and how did you overcome it? Ooh, well, um, I think, 
the first thing is getting out of your own way, right? I mean, a lot of us, you know, we have these great ideas and we're, you know, we want to be purposeful and, you know, we're very mission driven, um, but we are, we're met with our own roadblocks, right? I mean, the average person has anywhere, you know, from 60 to 80,000 thoughts per day. And, you know, 90% of those are on repeat. Um, and about 80% can be negative. Mm. So, you know, first and foremost, just getting that self doubt right out of the way um, and being comfortable in, in your own skin. Uh, hence my, you know, uh, my look here, right? Um, making the decision to really own, you know, who you are and being comfortable with bringing your personality, right? And your flavor um, to your business. So that would be the first and foremost um, tip that I would give. And then, um, of course, you know, setting yourself up for success by having a strong support team. So, you know, um, you know, being able to um, outsource to other professionals, being comfortable with that, um, understanding that when you do that, that allows you to be able to focus on your true passions. Um, and so, you know, establishing, you know, a strong uh, CPA, right? Um, a legal team, um, you know, um, a life coach, perhaps, right? Um, and, you know, the list can go on and on, but definitely um, being comfortable with, with seeking advice um, and help from those that are, um, you know, experts in their field. Um, and then, um, you know, the being, doing things like this, right? Like, you know, taking that, taking an extra, you know, leap of faith and kind of drawing a line in the sand and making the decision that you're gonna, you know, go for it um, and, uh, and showing up consistently. Um, and having, you know, accountability partners, you know, workout partners to, to help you achieve that. Awesome. So I'm hearing ask for help for things that you maybe don't, you're not an expert in, or maybe don't drive you crazy in a good way, right? Hire out the things that, uh, that drive you crazy in a bad way. And I'm hearing also, um, getting guidance from someone like a coach is, is phenomenal. And in addition to that, showing up consistently about your purpose and your vision and your, and your mission is definitely key, which is what Alicia is doing here today by showing up in this podcast. Now, Alicia, you mentioned hiring out a team, a law team uh, is something that's super beneficial to entrepreneurs. What are some of the law needs that an entrepreneur might need that maybe they're not necessarily thinking about and that they can address now as a precaution as a, as opposed to a reaction when things happen? Absolutely. Well, I definitely, given my dental background, I'm a strong believer in preventative maintenance, right? I mean, that's what I've been teaching and, you know, coaching um, my patients all these years. And so we need to do the same. Um, you know, there's the obvious, right? Like, you know, determining what route you need to go in business, right? Is it an LLC? Is it an S Corp, right? Um, you know, in uh, uh, obtaining all the certifications or licensings that we need and things of that nature, that's the obvious. Um, but I think taking it a step further is not just the initial setup itself, but having that ongoing, right, extra set of eyes to help guide you as you're making decisions. Because there are a lot of things that we just, you know, we, we take for granted, right? Or maybe we have blind trust in that, you know, uh, we're making the right decision. So contract and document review is huge, right? You definitely want to make sure that you've got another set of eyes reviewing that. All of that legal jargon, the decisions that we're making, um, you know, what we're going to be purchasing, those businesses, you know, they have a special legal department, right? That, that whatever amount that we're getting ready to spend with them, right? Um, has been allocated strictly for that. So you need to have the same yourself, right? To make sure that um, you kind of have a, a checks and balances in place as you're making decisions uh, along the way. And just being able to have the proper legal forms is crucial. Um, having, you know, a legal defense team as it relates, because we can't be naive, right? Um, as it relates to um, slander and discrimination these days, right? And, you know, making sure that we're um, protecting our integrity um, and, you know, having the proper copyrights and trademarks and, um, and things in place there. And especially, you know, and we don't, I think we kind of take this for granted too. We don't think, 
that identity theft can affect our business, right? We mm. just think that, you know, on a personal level and we associate it with just, you know, maybe our, you know, credit or banking accounts, but there's so many other things um, that can, you know, play, um, you know, on the dark web and things of that nature in relations to our business and the name, our good name, right? What we're trying to, um, you know, to actually start and initiate. So those are some of the things right off the top. And then of course, um, estate planning is mm. huge. Those are things that we don't think about, but when you're a business owner, you have to think like one and we have to make those wise decisions as to what we're going to do by way of, um, successorship, you know, and, um, you know, what's, what's going to be the plan of action. Um, and, you know, we need to have our healthcare power of attorneys in place and our financial power of attorneys in place, because although we own a business, it's still a personal liability. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we are covering all of our bases there and not just assuming that that's all going to be sorted out and figured out for us. So it's just the, the wise thing to do. Mm -hmm. So what's the first step that someone would do uh, to get covered in all those bases with you? So the first step is, you know, let's have a conversation. Let's really, you know, iron out what it is your, your industry is, you know, what your, your goals are, who your target audience is going to be so that we can make sure that we have a protection package that's developed just, you know, uniquely for you to be able to make sure that you have, you know, um, all your CRM stuff covered, right? Um, maybe your interstate, right? And so you want to make sure that you're, you know, um, following, you know, all the legalities, you know, from state to state, or maybe you're, you know, even nationwide. So um, first step would be, let's have a conversation. Um, and let's just, you know, iron out exactly what it is that you want, what you want to accomplish as a business owner. And then let's, let's create a plan that's unique um, to you and affordable, right? That's the cool thing about what I have to offer is that, you know, you don't have to check your pocketbook, right? Before you actually check your rights and have that type of coverage. So the cool thing is, is, you know, for something um, that normally would maybe cost $300 an hour, you can actually have, you know, um, coverage for, you know, in all different 15 areas of law for, you know, maybe about $150 a month, right? Mm -hmm. So how awesome would that be um, so that you can actually, you know, put your money more into, you know, uh, fueling whatever your passion is, as opposed to having to, you know, pay the, the large amounts. Sure. Can you tell me and give me a story of an example of a client that came to you who was a business owner and had some needs and perhaps you and your company were able to help them with some things? Absolutely. Um, so I had a specific business owner that was going into a partnership. And I think a, a lot of times we take that for granted because, you know, we want to be friends, right? And cordial and, you know, but we still know that we've got to handle our business, right? Um, and so there was um, a need for a, a non-biased, right, um, person to kind of, you know, help delegate responsibilities and, and really be able to lay down, you know, what the expectations should be um, and take that emotion out of it. Um, and mm -hmm. I think that, you know, that's sometimes, you know, comes into play and we become very subjective, you know, um, and making those decisions. So um, I was able to kind of act as, as a liaison um, between the two of them and, and help, uh, you know, iron out some of the things that needed to be done within their contracts and things of that nature. Um, and then, you know, the pointing them in the right direction with the law firm, who then in turn made sure that all of their uh, paperwork um, was handled correctly and so that they could actually also operate, um, you know, in North America period and not mm -hmm. just locally. So that was huge because mm -hmm. they really had no idea, you know, where to start there. Um, and, uh, and to save a relationship, because <laughs> to be honest with you, it was, it was getting a little hairy um, between the two of them, you know, uh, one wanted to go one direction and, and, you know, one had an entirely different, you know, ideas. So, um, so we were able to do that. We were able to um, get their e-commerce up and running um, so that they could, you know, be operating and handling that correctly and be PCI compliant and all of that as well. So, um, so yeah, the, the, all of this is so rewarding too, right? Like their mm -hmm. friendships that you get to make in the process and, um, and now, you know, um, 
and being able to do business with other women across the globe. Like we should mm-hmm. be, you know, taking care of one another. So that's cool too. All the people that I get to come into contact with um, and learn about. And then now I can start taking advantage of, you know, Hey, what value you have, you know, for my household. So. Absolutely. And um, if they want to find out more from you, where should they find you? Uh, what is, what's your, what's your website? And then also I'd love to know your Instagram handle as well. Sure. So um, my website is, um, it's manager with a mission, um, dot com. So you can go there and, um, you know, don't be alarmed when you first uh, jump on the website. A lot of it will be geared towards my dental peeps, right? Mm-hmm. My dental community across the globe, because um mm-hmm. You know, that's one of the things that we have lacked is, is resources within the, the dental industry um, from an employee standpoint. So I wanted to introduce non-traditional benefits um, to that industry. So you'll see that first and foremost, but everybody, right, deserves access um, and needs the extra layer of protection and preparation. So um, don't fret. You can just scroll down just a little bit on there um, and, um, and still get all of the you know, questions that you have uh, answered as well and take a look at everything there. Um, so on Facebook, it's Managers with a Mission. On IG, it's Managers with a Mission. So can't miss me, uh, you know, hot pink hair. <laughs> you'll, uh, you, you'll find me very easily. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And what's one thing before we leave off uh, that you'd love to accomplish with your company in the next uh, couple years? Wow. Um, I would love to to educate as many people as possible about, um, you know, living a more proactive lifestyle. One of the um, phrases that uh, I've kind of come up with or coined is, you know, responsible is the new sexy. Mm. um, That stemmed from a conversation with, you know, one of my daughters and talking about dating, you know, and Mm. she was like, you know, I really you know, looks aren't everything, mom, you know, and secretly you're like, yes, you know, right. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was really about, you know, the light bulb moment for her of, you know, now learning, right, that adult adulting process and some, you know, where your priorities should be. Um, And that, you know, being responsible, thinking more responsibly, being more proactive as, you know, versus reactionary is where it's at. Um, And that provides Mm -hmm. that extra layer of security and stability. Um, And that's what everyone wants and needs. So, I want to be able to educate as many people as possible. And secondarily, um, as a result of my son, I became very active in suicide prevention. And so um, a portion of, um, of, you know, the profits that I make are donated to um, a a nonprofit, my nonprofit, um, United for a Good Cause um, with Hope Squad. And so um, you know, I want that, which is a peer to peer suicide prevention program, which, um, we now have in 30 schools, right. Within, um, Amazing. Movies. so I'm super pumped. And we start as young, you guys, it's fourth grade. Um, mm-hmm. so, um, so it's a four year curriculum. So I'm excited about, you know, us being able to, to launch that, but I want it to be across the globe. Like I want, this needs to be everywhere and um you know the the younger the better because we need to provide you know a a solid sounding board right um for them amongst their peers because they're not always gonna obviously come to us to us as much as we want that yeah absolutely well thank you so much alicia for being here with us today and this will be presented in ig linkedin youtube whatever platform that you're watching this on just go ahead and ask Alicia any questions. We'll try to tag her on all the platforms so she can be notified for you. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.